That's true, most socialists. Oh, isn't that sad? Do you read that with Jack? Isn't it sad? You've got a man who said, I love God, I love people. He turned against God, he hated people, he became a Marxist, a communist. Oh, what a terrible, beginning with socialism, of course, and then Marxist, communism, that's how it goes. And it's wanna... known for him today, Marxism, Ab communism. Absolutely. Well, I've got a question. Perhaps you can even answer this question in your own mind. Do you know people who once loved the Lord and said, I'm a Christian, and then they turned against the Lord, became anti-Christ, anti-God, and they choose to live their life that way? How about in the Bible? Were there people like that in the Bible? How about it, Jack, today and in the Bible? All of you know the story of Judas Iscariot. The Lord, in Matthew 10, verses 1 to 7, chose 12 apostles. Judas was one of them. And he told them to go and preach and heal. And Judas preached and healed everywhere. If I had time, I could show you where it's located in the Bible. And you know what? He was so trusted, they made him the treasurer. Now, this is where his socialism comes in. In, in Luke chapter 12, verses 5 to 7, a woman is anointing the feet of Jesus. And she dries what she's put on his feet with her hair. And Judas comes in and says, why wasn't that ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? This, he said, not because he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and bare the treasurer's bag to put in his own pocket. That's where a lot of socialism ends as you study the lives of these men. They had everything. The people had nothing. Take it away from the rich. Give it to the poor. Judas showed his socialism there. And you know, there are a lot of people today and they make a decision and they're gone. I think of a man in our time, a friend of Dr. Omens and mine, Chuck Templeton. He started out with Billy Graham, both of them as the Youth for Christ ministers together. They took turns. They shared the pulpit. They shared life in the motels. And Billy Graham is true to God even to this day. And when he dies, it'll be to die as gain, Philippians 1.21, because to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord, 2 Corinthians 5.8. Chuck Temple, and I saw him at the great Youth for Christ rally in Detroit. I was just a boy. He preached and a thousand came forward. You know where it ended up? He turned to atheism. He wanted nothing to do with Christ. He mocked Christianity. And in a book he wrote just before he died, he said, Farewell, God. What a sad thing. Now, how is it that these men can speak the language and know all these things? Because many of them, when they walk an aisle, have a religious exercise, but not an experience with God. They become unconverted converts. And you know, it's pictured so beautifully in the Word of God. Let Jesus speak. Mark 7, verse 6. Well, hath Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites. This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Luke 15, 15. You are they which justify yourselves before men by what you say, but God knows your heart. Titus 1, 16. They profess that they know God, but in works, daily living, they deny him being abominable, disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. Hypocrites. And you know, I meet thousands of them. I've seen two and a half million people come to Christ, but I also have seen people in America who were brought up in Christianity and they talked about Christ and today they mock him and laugh at him and want nothing to do with him. Now, is it because they lost their salvation? No, it's because they never had it. First John 2, 19. He's talking about ministers. They went out from us, but they weren't of us. If they had been of us, Chuck Templeton included, they would have remained with us but they turned their back on it that it might be made manifest, proven that they were not all of us. And hell is going to be hot for these hypocrites. For Jesus said to Judas, it were better that you had never been born than to die in this condition. And remember, when he died, he went to his own place, hell, Acts 125. And I think that's where Chuck Templeton it is tonight. Even that great preacher that blessed my heart that night. In hell, he lifted up his eyes, being in torment. Luke 16, 23. You cannot mock Christ and get away with it. He that believeth on Christ is not condemned. He that believeth not is condemned already. That's John 3, 18. John 3, 36. He that believeth on Christ 
hath everlasting life. He that believeth not shall not see life, but the wrath, the wrath, the wrath of God abides on him. And that's eternal hell. And I'm still a hellfire preacher because it's in this book 200 times. No one will silence what I preach when it's in this book. Oh, Jack, that's powerful. You know, I've had people come to me and uh, say, you know, Rick, I'm, I'm not sure I'm a, a Christian. And I never say to them, well, you're a good church member or you do good works or you give to this organization. You're a good person. Don't ever say that. We're not good enough to get to heaven. I say to them, make sure. Be sure you have the Lord in your heart. That's the main thing you're talking oh, about here, yes, Jack. Honey. To be and beware sure. Beware of atheism and socialism because it leads men to where Marx went and Chuck Templeton went and where you're going to go if you're not trusting totally in the precious blood of the Lord Jesus like Marx mentioned earlier in life. We're going to show you in a minute how you can be sure that you're ready for heaven. And now I just want to say, oh, we've had to go back to this wonderful, wonderful offer of the week. Dictator of the New World Order, alive and waiting in the wings. We had so many people asking for it. Take a look at the preview and you'll see why. Jesus said there shall be false Christs and false prophets. Historically, they have come and gone, with the exception of the two final day leaders awaiting the imminent moment of their inauguration. One will become the dictator of the New World Order, the other the apostate head of a world religion uniting all faiths. Plans for both movements are being laid now. Will their seven-year term limit produce a blessing or a tragedy for six billion, seven hundred million global citizens? Will their rule lead to global peace or World War III? Dr. and Mrs. Van Empey will astonish you in their one-hour, 45-minute study as they deal with the proposed and promoted identities of the global dictator and the religious Christian defector. For details as to who, why, and when this dynamic apocalyptic duo begin their international reign, order Dictator of the New World Order, alive and waiting in the wings. Whoa! Don't put off making the call. There's 800 number and there's the address. And you know, Jack, I know you want to say a word about why we had to bring this back because too many people were asking for it. We had someone else's material for eight weeks and during that time I still got a couple thousand orders for this because it's in such demand. So we felt we had to bring it back for a number of weeks right now. And remember, this dictator will lead us into socialism and the New World Order. You know, I'm hearing that so very, very much about the New World Order, aren't you? You pick up your newspaper and there it is, the New World Order. All right, who is waiting in the wings? There's the 800 number and there's the address. We'll tell you the profile of that person and you want to be sure and study it. 120,000 orders already. All right, Jack, we're going to go on here. I could not believe my eyes as to how Christianity is being attacked around the world. And in Oklahoma City, there's an artist who has, oh, what a terrible uh, picture of the Virgin Mary. Take a look at the headline, Weapon-Toting Virgin Mary. Art is gaining attention now, this Oklahoma City woman's art, of a gun-toting Virgin Mary. Mary. And then on the bottom, she has the Virgin Mary's beautiful heart, but in her right hand, a terrible hand grenade. Oh, my. Blasphemy. Oh, yes, it is. Going on, Italy fights for crucifixes in the classrooms. You know, I'll tell you, Christianity is being attacked around the world, and here's something else. A change for C3 exchange. Church takes a new name and takes down the cross. Drop the name Christ Community Church and took the cross down. Now that is right here in Michigan. Friends, can you see how Christianity is being attacked around the world? 